Good evening, everybody. Good evening, teacher. Good okay. evening. Hi. Good to see you again. Okay. Um, let's begin. I'm going to start calling your names now for the attendance. Here we go. Okay, so when you hear your name, please let me know. Say present or just let me know you're there. Alejandro Jose Quintanilla Ayala. Alejandro Jose Quintanilla Ayala. See here? Alicia Guadalupe Hernández Romero. Alicia Guadalupe Hernández. Ana Filomena Mendoza. Present. Thank you. Ana Yanira Mendoza Godoy. Ana Yanira Mendoza Godoy. Andrea Geraldine Sánchez Racinos. Present teacher. Thank you. Andrea Michelle García Selva. Andrea Michelle García Selva. You hear? Blanca Marisol Vargas Esteves. Blanca Marisol Vargas Esteves. Boris Martín Salinas Quintanilla. Boris Martín Salinas Quintanilla. Celina Yvette Gutierrez Osorio. Present. Thank you. Denis Isaías Gómez Rodas. Present, good evening. Good evening. Oops, I've been pressing the wrong number. Just give me a second. Okay, Daisy Carolina Rodriguez Mejia. Present. Thank you. I have two chat entries before I continue. Uh, Miguel Quintanilla dice presente. Miguel Ángel Quintanilla, okay. Vamos ahí. Solamente eh, Miguel Ángel Quintanilla aparece como nombre Samsung SMS908E. Hay que cambiarle al nombre, ¿verdad? Ok. Next. Eric Ernesto Linares Aguirre. Present. Thank you. Erika Meidel. O Maidel Antonio Flores. Present. Thank you. Francisco Alberto Lemus Guzmán. Good evening, teacher. Present. Good evening. Thank you. Uh, Iris Regina Hernández Cuellar. Is here, teacher. Thank you. Jenny Elizabeth Santillana Cortés. Present. Thank you. Jose Eraivin Enriquez. Present teacher. Thank you. Katia Graciela Juan de Candray. Katia Graciela Juan de Candray. Maritza Isabel Méndez Aguirre. Present teacher. Thank you. Miguel Ángel, ya me dijo que aquí está. Nadia Isolina Rodríguez Ramírez. Present teacher. Thank you. Noemí Alicia Estrada de Valle. Present teacher. Thank you. Ronald Antonio Luna López. Present teacher. Thank you. Saúl Antonio Hernández Torres. Present. Thank you. Por aquí tenemos una entrada de chat. Alicia Hernández. Present, dice Alicia. Vamos a ver. Alicia Guadalupe Hernández Romero. Ok. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, teacher. <laughs> You're welcome. Okay. Uh, so just like yesterday, at the end of the class, I'm going to call the attendance one more time, just in case uh, some people have joined the class after I call their names. So let's do this. Okay, everybody. Welcome once again. This is Inglés Pre Avanzado Módulo 1, and that's me, Ivan Doñan, at your service. And this is session number two. Today is February 28th of 2023. This is the last day of the month. So Let's do this. So what are we going to do? Well, first, we have a review. We have a review of the content we studied yesterday, which is relative clauses. After that, we're going to study uh, relative clauses with um, uh, relative pronouns of subjects and objects. Okay, you will see. 
So um, a quick review. Okay, this is the same information from yesterday, but there is an exercise that we haven't done and that we need to solve today. And it's going to be good because it's, uh, you know, we get to practice the, the, the theory and the structure one more time. So you have this <clears throat> clauses with who, that, and which. So there's the example situation. Last week we had a party and a lot of people came. Everybody enjoyed it. So you can say everybody who came to the party enjoyed it. That's a relative clause. Relative clauses begin with who, that, or which, okay? Also, they can begin with uh, whose and where. So a clause is a part of a sentence. We have a chat entry here. Blanca Marisol Vargas dice presente. Blanca Marisol Vargas, okay, thank you. Your attendance has been registered. Thank you very much. So a clause is a part of a sentence. A relative clause tells us which person or thing or what kind of person or thing the speaker means. For example, when I say the woman who lives next door to me, if I only say the woman, people will ask me, what woman? Who are you talking about? But if I say the woman who lives next door to me, ah, then you know that woman specifically. Okay. People who complain all the time. If I only say people, you will ask me, teacher, what people? Who are you talking about? Okay, so I'm talking about people who complain all the time. Okay, so that's the idea. Who complain all the time tells us what kind of people. I have a chat entry here. Boris Salinas. Okay, Boris Salinas. Present. Thank you. Un recordatorio, lo digo en español. Eh, recuérdense lo que dijeron ahora en el grupo. Eh, por favor, todos ingresen su nombre completo, ¿verdad? Que no solo sea un nombre y un apellido, sino que sea su nombre completo según DUI. Eso para efectos de registro. Y para que nuestra participación en la clase quede completamente registrada, sin ningún margen de error y, sin, y que no quepa ninguna duda que usted ahí está, ¿verdad? Ok. Ana Yanira Mendoza Godoy. Ok. Just join the class. Thank you. Your attendance has been registered. Okay, let's continue. So we can use who in a relative clause for people. Remember, just for people, not things. You say, for example, the woman who lives no next door to me is the doctor. So who is the woman? You say, I don't, uh, I don't like people who complain all the time. Who refers to the people? An architect is someone who designs building. Who is someone or the architect also? What was the name of the person who called? Okay, who is the person? So you use who for people. Do you know anyone who wants to buy a car? Again, who is anyone? It's referring to a person. So you use that for people, but not which. Okay, you just have to remember that. The woman that lives next door to me is a doctor. It's the same as the woman who lives next door to me is a doctor. So that refers to the woman specifically. So again, when you have people, you can use who, and you can use that, but you can't use which, okay? If you say the woman which lives next door to me is a doctor, that will be incorrect. So don't use it, okay? Very important. Okay, so uh, next. Remember, this is a review only. When we're talking about things, we use that or which, okay? That or which, that's the idea. Mm -hmm. Just a moment. But we don't use who, okay? You say, I don't like stories that have unhappy endings or I don't like stories which have unhappy endings. So when you say that or which, you refer to the stories. Grace works for a company that makes furniture or Grace works for a company which makes furniture, okay? That and which refer to the company. The machine that broke down is working right now or the machine which broke down is working uh, again now. So that and which refer to the machine. Now, in relative clauses, we use who, that, and which. We don't use he, she, or it. Just remember that. Very important. Example, I met a Canadian woman at the party. That's sentence number one. She is an English teacher. That's sentence number two. So if you want to combine the two sentences into one by using a relative clause, then you have something like this. I met a Canadian woman at the party, relative clause, who is an English teacher who refers to the Canadian woman. So you don't use she, you say who. They refer to the same person. 
Okay, we have a chat entry again. Andrea Michelle, okay, Garcia Selva. Okay, Andrea Michelle Garcia, I'm registering your attendance. Thank you very much. All right, let's continue. Second example. I can't find my keys. I can't find the keys, I'm sorry. That's sentence number one. They were on the table, that's sentence number two. So if you want to combine them both in one sentence, then you have to use a relative clause. And the result is something like this. I can't find the keys that were on the table. That is the relative pronoun and it refers to they, it refers to the keys, the same thing, okay? So uh, that's the review, okay? And there's an exercise that I want you to do now for me. What is that exercise? Okay, this is your turn. Complete the sentences. You have to choose from the boxes and use who, that, or which. And in the box, you have the following entries. Happened in the past, runs away from home, cannot be explained, developed the theory of relativity, sorry, makes furniture, can support life, has stayed there, we're hanging on the wall. So you have to choose one entry from the uh, box and you have to complete the sentence by using that and also a relative pronoun, who, that, or which. There's an example, makes furniture. So Helen works for a company that makes furniture. You can say Helen works for a company which makes furniture is also possible. So um, again, I want you to use the relative pronoun, who, that, or which. And also I want you to use one of the items in the box. So who wants to try number two? Raise your hand, please. Eric Ernesto, let's do this. I believe the movie is about a girl who <laughs> runs away from home. The movie is about a girl who runs away from home. That is correct. Very good. Thank you, Eric. That's correct. Great. Just don't forget to lower your hand. <laughs> Thank you. Si es que si no después quedo yo, digo yo, quería seguir participando o ya terminó, se le olvidó jala, no sé, para no confundirlos. Okay, number three. Selena y Beth. Thank you. Um, the third one is what happened to the pictures that were hanging on the wall? What happened to the pictures that were hanging on the wall or what happened to the pictures which were hanging on the wall? Okay, very good. Thank you, Selena. Correct answer. Saul Antonio, you get number four. Thank you. Okay, a mystery is something that can cannot be explained. A mystery is something that cannot be explained. Good, or a mystery is something which cannot be explained. Very good. Thank you, Saul. Correct answer. Number six, who wants to try? No, sorry, number five, who wants to try? Uh, Saul, okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much, but I want a different person, but awesome. I love it, I love it, I love it. Okay, but I need a different person. Eric, okay, you have participated also. <laughs> Jose, okay, Jose, please, and then Maritza. Say, uh, five. I've heard it's a good hotel, but I don't know anyone uh, who I has stay stayed up. there. I don't know anyone who has stayed there. Correct. Or I don't know anyone that has stayed there. Very good. Thank you, Jose. That's the correct answer. Maritza, do you have number six? History is the study of things. Uh, so, sorry, who's who's talking? <laughs> ah, Eric. Uh, sorry, Eric. Um, no, who's talking? Someone's talking. <laughs> okay, so uh, what about this one? Maritza, Maritza, your turn, number six. Then Dennis and then uh, Nadia. Uh, Maritza, I believe your microphone is... Oh, I can't hear you. Can you hear her? I can't. Uh, let's try again. Uh, I don't know if it's me. Can, 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 can anyone else, does anyone else have the same problem? I, I can't hear Maritza, can you hear her? Uh, Maritza, I'm afraid we can't hear you. 
I try. I try. Okay. Teacher. Okay. Okay. Now I can hear you. History no. is the. Okay. Ah, no, that's Nadia. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh. Uh, just just a second. Okay, Nadia, you, you can try, but uh, Maritza, uh, I think there's a problem with your microphone because we can't hear you. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay, uh, Nadia, do you want to try number number six, please? And then Dennis, number seven? Um, history is the study of things that happened in the past. History is the study of things that happened in the past or which happened in the past. Very good. That's the right answer. Okay, thank you. Uh, Dennis, number seven, please. Albert Einstein was a scientist who developed the theory of relativity. Albert Einstein was a scientist who developed or that developed the theory of relativity. That is correct. Very good. Thank you, Dennis. And what about number eight? Who wants to try it? Who wants to take number eight? Boris. Okay, Boris. Uh, it seems uh, that Earth is the only planet uh, that can support life. It seems that Earth is the only planet that can support life or which can support life. That is correct. Very good. Very good. Okay, great. So um, I guess this is clear. Okay, I guess we don't need to explain much more about it. But now we have to get into the real topic, the topic that's on the material, the topic that's on the manual. Um, and it's here. Okay, this is the grammar focus again. This is relative pronouns of subjects. Again, we read this information yesterday. As subjects, we have this. This person says, <laughs> it's a lady, I like guys, they aren't too serious. So I like guys who aren't too serious. I like guys that aren't too serious. Also, you have a second sentence. I like guys, second sentence, they have a good sense of humor. So the person says, I like guys who or that have a good sense of humor. Uh, here, they are using a relative pronoun as a subject. What about the second examples or the second set of examples? I'm sorry. Relative pronouns as objects. I'd prefer someone. That's the first sentence. Second sentence. I can talk to him easily. So joining the two sentences together, you have I'd prefer someone who or that I can talk to easily. But if you notice here, the relative pronoun becomes uh, optional. If you don't want to use it, you don't. I mean, you can just leave it out. You say I'd prefer someone I can talk to easily because the relative pronoun is not the subject, it's the object. Second example, I prefer someone, that's the first sentence. Second sentence, I have fun with him, okay? Putting them to, uh, putting them both together, you have, I prefer someone I have fun with, or I prefer someone who I have fun with, or I prefer someone that I have fun with. So um, this may be a little bit confusing <laughs> right now because this is, uh, the only piece of explanation that the material offers, but as usual, okay, there is some extra information that I have for you right here, and I'm going to try to make it as clear as possible. Let's take a look again. This is not in the material, okay, so this is extra. Everybody, relative clauses with or without relative pronouns. I'm just going to try to make myself a little bit more comfortable in this chair. So, okay, let's do this. Relative clauses with or without relative pronouns. You see this person, okay? Look at these example sentences. The people who live next door are very noisy or the people that live next door are very noisy. Sometimes you have neighbors and they make a lot of noise. They play loud music or they speak loudly, okay? Or they have uh, dogs that bark all the time. So people are noisy. So the people who live next door to me, Okay, who or that, that's the people, it's the subject. Okay, the people live next door to me. So the people who live next door to me are noisy. And where are the keys that were on the table or where are the keys which were on the table? The keys were on the table. That and which refer to the keys and that's the subject. A bit confusing right now, but don't worry. It's easy to understand. You have it here. Who and that refers to the people. That in which referred to the keys. But here's the deal. Just a second. Okay, sometimes who, that, and which, and I'm going to highlight them because I forgot. Just a second.
Okay. Sometimes who, that, and which is the object of the verb. For example, the woman who I wanted to see was away on vacation or the woman that I wanted to see was away on vacation. So when I say who or that, who am I referring to? I'm referring to the woman. I wanted to see who? I wanted to see the woman. Who or that? That's the woman. It is the object. The subject is I. Okay. Second example. Did you find the keys that you lost? Or did you find the keys which you lost? That and which refer to the keys. That and which, that's the keys. It is the object. You is the subject. You lost the keys. The keys that you lost. So, when who, that, or which is the object, you can leave it out. I'm going to highlight them again. Okay, here we go. Again, so when who, that, or which is the object, you can leave it out. You can omit it. So you can say, for example, the woman who I wanted to see was away on vacation. You can say, the woman that I wanted to see was away on vacation. Or you can simply say, the woman I wanted to see was away on vacation. The relative pronoun is not absolutely necessary. It becomes optional. If you want to use it, you use it. If you don't want to use it, don't use it. Another example. Did you find the keys that you lost? Did you find the keys which you lost? Did you find the keys you lost? All of them are correct. You can use that, you can use which, or you can decide not to use either of them. Next example. The dress that Lisa bought doesn't fit her very well. Or you can simply say, the dress Lisa bought doesn't fit her very well. Just like that. One more example. Is there anything that I can do? Or is there anything I can do? Nadia uh, has a question. Okay, Nadia. Uh, teacher, I guess I have a question about the last exercise. The uh, last exercise that we completed. No, um, no the dress. The dress. Ah, the example. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, when, when you use the second form in this example, uh, we don't need to um, use uh, apostrophe and ace when when his, um, when we say dress Lisa's? No, 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 not really, because we're not talking about possession. No, not, not, not oh, really. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. that, I don't understand this part. Okay. okay. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Now, it's not about possession because we're talking about the dress. What dress? The dress that Lisa bought. Um, maybe you mean something like this. Here's what I understand. Something like Lisa's dress. Something like that. I believe that was the question. So because we're not talking about possession, we don't yes, need an teacher. apostrophe. Okay. Yeah, that's the thing. Now, um, one thing. I know this is a little bit complicated. I can see it in your faces. It's a bit confusing. Okay. But don't worry. I have a very easy way of explaining this. This is the technical way of explaining it. So here's the technical explanation. Look, you must use who, that, or which when it is the subject of the relative clause. You cannot leave it out. You cannot leave out who, that, or which in these examples. Now take a look. The woman who or that lives next door to me is a doctor. So what happens if you say the woman lives next door, lives next door to me is a doctor? That's incorrect. You have to use who or that. Second example, where are the keys that were on the table? Where are the keys which were on the table? This is good. But if you say, where are the keys were on the table? It doesn't make sense. This is incorrect. You have to use it. I want a cell phone that takes good photos. I want a cell phone which takes good photos. This is good. But if you say, I want a cell phone takes good photos, this will be incorrect. Another example, 
what is the name of the lady who is wearing a blue dress? Or what is the name of the lady that is wearing a blue dress? That is good. But if you say, what is the name of the lady is wearing a blue dress? That's incorrect. You need to use who or that. And finally, Mary Curie is the woman who discovered radium or Mary Curie is the woman that discovered radium. It's just radioactivity. So that's good. But if you say Mary Curie is the woman discover radium, there's a problem because you need to use the relative pronoun. Now, maybe right now you're wondering, okay, so in some sentences, you have to use it. And in other sentences, you can omit it. So what's the logic here? When do I know when I have to use it? And when do I know when I can omit it? Well, Again, this is the technical explanation. You must use who, that, or which when it is the subject of the relative clause. You cannot leave it out, but that's very technical. I'm going to give you the easy explanation. Take a look, everybody, please click, pay close attention. Easy explanation. If the relative pronoun who, that, or which is followed by a verb, you must use it. Esa es la explicación fácil. Let's take a look. Who and that. And after that, you have lives. It's a verb. That means you need it. Use it. That and which. And after that, you have where. That's the verb be. That means you need the relative pronoun. You have to use it. Third example. That and which. And then you have a verb, takes, okay? That means you need the relative pronouns. They are not optional. You need them. You have to use them. Who or that, and then you have is, is wearing. That's pretty much present continuous or present progressive. That's the verb. So that means you need to use them. They are necessary. Who and that, and after that, you have a verb. That means you need them. That's the idea. Now, this technical explanation is a bit complicated, but this is the easy explanation. If you find the relative pronoun, who, that, or which, and after that, immediately, you have a verb, then you need to use it. You cannot eliminate it. You cannot omit it. Nadia, you have a question. I'm sorry, teacher, but I okay. difficult to understand this part. Mm -hmm. And I have a question. Sure. Uh, the time of uh, conjugation of the verb in the sentence does not matter. And no. We... no, it doesn't matter. It can be present, past, future, whatever you want. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't affect uh, the rule. The thing is, again, right? When you have the relative pronoun, who or that, okay, and immediately after you have a verb, then you need to use it. Keep it, okay? That where, which where, you need it. That takes, which takes, you need it. Who is wearing, that is wearing, you need it. Who discovered, that discovered, you need it, use it. It's absolutely necessary. That's the easy explanation. So. Let's take a look at the rest. Technical explanation. When who, that, or which is the object, you can leave it out. You can use it or not. You decide. So you can say, for example, the woman who or that I wanted to see was away on vacation. Or you can say the woman I wanted to see was away on vacation. Both sentences are correct. Second example. Did you find the keys that you lost? Did you find the keys which you lost? Or simply, did you find the keys you lost? Both are correct. The dress that Lisa bought doesn't fit her very well. Or the dress Lisa bought doesn't fit her very well. Both sentences are correct. Is there anything that I can do? Is there anything I can do? Both questions are correct. The film that we saw was very exciting. The film we saw was very exciting. Both are correct. Now, what about the easy explanation? Right here. If the relative pronoun who, that, or which is not followed by a verb, you can either use it or leave it out. 
its use becomes optional. Let's take a look. Who or that, and what do you have after that? Do you have a verb? Is this a verb when you say I? It is not a it's verb. A subject. It's a subject. That means the use of who or that becomes optional. If you want to use it, use it. If you don't want to use it, don't use it. No problem. Again, did you find the keys that you lost? You. That's not a verb. It's a subject. That means you can simply say, did you find the keys you lost? The dress that Lisa bought. Again, after that, you have Lisa. Lisa is not a verb. It's a subject. So, the dress Lisa bought. Is there anything that I can do? I. That's not a verb. It's a subject. So, you can omit it. The film that we saw was very exciting. The word that follows is we. It's not a verb. So, you can omit the relative pronoun. That's the thing. So one more time, if after the relative pronoun you have a verb, then the relative pronoun is necessary. You have to use it. If you don't have a verb, then it becomes optional. If you want to use it, you use it. If you don't want to use it, don't use it. No problem. That's the easy explanation. Um, is this clear? Yes, yes, okay. Yes. Okay. Great. All right. So, well, moving on because it's getting late. It's 34 already. Okay. Half the class is gone. Is gone. So, um, this is also very, very important. Take a look. I don't know if we should probably go and solve an exercise before we do this. Yeah, I think we're going to do that because otherwise it will be too much information. Okay. I'm moving this. Okay, so uh, let's do an exercise here, quickly. This is your turn. In some of these sentences, you need who or that. Correct the sentences where necessary. For example, the woman lives next door is a doctor. There's a problem right there. The sentence doesn't make sense. So you say the woman who lives next door is a doctor. What about the second one? Did you find the keys you lost? This is okay. Because you can say, did you find the keys that you lost? Did you find the keys you lost? This sentence is good. So I want you to take a look at the sentences and tell me if they are okay or if they need a relative pronoun, who or that. All right? Who wants to try? Let's do number three. Jose, number three, please. The third one is okay, teacher. The third one is okay. Can you read it the for me, please? The people we... Mm -hmm. The people we met last night uh, were, were very friendly. Okay. Let's see. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> it is correct. Very good. Thank you, Jose. The people we met last night were very friendly. You can also say the people that we met last night were very friendly or the people who we met last night were very friendly. Thank you very much. Denis is a yes. You have number four. And then Ana Filomena. Number five. The number four is incorrect. It's incorrect. Okay. So what's the correct form? The people who work in the office are very friendly. That's right. The people who work in the office are very friendly. If you just say the people work in the office are very friendly, that doesn't make sense. Okay. You need the relative pronoun right there. We have a chat entry. Can you share the presentation later in the WhatsApp group? Okay, I will. I will. I will send it to you. Just remind me again at the end of the class. Otherwise, I might forget. Okay. Um, Ana Filomena. Okay, number five. The number five is okay, teacher. Okay, good. Can you read it for me, please? I like the people I got it. I work with. I work with. Uh -huh. it, yeah, I that's right. It. I like the people I work with. Or you can say, I like the people that I work with, or I like the people who I work with. Correct. Very good. Thank you. Maritza. Okay, Maritza. Uh, I'm okay. trying to chat. <laughs> okay, I can hear you now. Good. Okay, so number six. Uh, for me, it's okay, teacher. For you, it's okay. Let's see. Yeah, that's right. It is okay. Good. Can you read it, please? Okay. What have you done with the money? 
I gave you. What have you done with the money I gave you? Or what have you done with the money that I gave you? Or what have you done with the money which I gave you? Good. Thank you very much, Maritza. What about number seven? Who wants to try? Vamos. Eh, quiero escuchar otras voces. Veamos, porque ya empecé a notar, es la segunda clase y ya empecé a notar que siempre son las mismas personas que participan. Lo cual es excelente. Me encanta que participen, ¿verdad? Pero también quiero escuchar a los demás, ¿verdad? Que no, no solo escuchar la voz cuando me dicen present teacher. <ríe> No, pero está bien, no, no, no bajen la manita. Está bien que participen, no hay problema. Ok, Saúl. Ok, then Selina. So, Saúl, number seven. Solo es una invitación okay. a los demás que también se animen. De acuerdo. Saúl. The number seven is incorrect. Ok, the what's the correct one? is, what happened to the money that was on the table? That's right. What happened to the money that was on the table? Good. Very good. Ok, thank you, Saúl. Selina. Number eight, please. Okay. What's the worst film that you've ever seen? So is the sentence uh, correct or do you need the pronoun? Mm -hmm. What's the worst film you've ever seen? Okay. But, but my question again is because... If you told me what's the worst film you've ever seen, and also you told me what's the worst film you that you have ever seen, the first uh, option was good. But my question is, is right. this is this question okay the way it is, or do you need the relative pronoun? I think I need it. You think you need it? Okay. All right. Let's take a look. It's actually okay the way it is. But you can use it, of course, because it becomes optional. So you can also use it. So what's the worst film you've ever seen? Let's uh, put it here. What's the worst, worst film you've ever seen? OK. So what's the worst film that or which you've ever seen? Why is that? You have the relative pronoun. You can omit it because after that, you don't have a verb, you have a subject. So you can say, what's the worst film that you've ever seen, which you've ever seen, or simply the worst film you've ever seen. So what you told me at the beginning was good, okay? But it also turns out that the way it is, is also okay. Thank you, uh, Selena. What about number nine? Who wants to try number nine? Who can help me? With number nine. Someone talking? I think I heard a voice. You know, Cecita al fondo. Okay, uh, who wants to try number nine? Ah, yeah, I see. This is a tricky one. Okay. <laughs> now I understand why do you, why you don't want to participate. Okay, so um, who wants to try? Maritza, let's I'm do this. To... <laughs> okay, okay. Um, is correct. It is correct. Not really. You need to no, change something. No. Uh huh. Uh huh. I I. <laughs> no problem. No problem. Oh, um, I tengo dudas. What's the best thing? <laughs> what's the best thing it has ever that happened to you? Mm, not really. No. It's a bit different. Oh, uh, I think that it. <laughs> no, it's uh, for me. It's okay. <laughs> okay. Well, let's see. Let's see what what Jose has to say about it. Okay, Jose Enriquez. Let's see. Teacher, I think they are two sentences, and we can change it for uh, which or that. Mm -hmm. So uh, what would be the correct what's form? The, what's the best thing that has ever happened to you? Correct. What is the best thing that has ever happened to you? So instead of it, you use that. Okay. All right. Good. That was a bit tricky. Okay. So thank you, Maritza. And thank you, Jose, for your participation. Very good. Okay. Great. Um, very nice, very nice results. I'm happy. 
So second exercise. Now take a look. What do you say in these situations? Complete each sentence with a relative clause. So your friend list, I'm sorry. Oh, I made a mistake here. It's not list, it's lost. Okay. So your friend, I'm going to save the file before I forget. Your friend lost some keys. You want to know if he found them. So you say, did you find the keys you lost? What about number two? A friend is wearing a dress. You like it. So you tell her, what do you tell your friend? Raise your hand if you know the answer or simply if you want to participate. Jose, okay, Jose. I like the dress uh, you're wearing. I like the dress you're wearing. Whoops. Uh, okay. That you are wearing. Yeah, totally. I like the dress that you're wearing. I like the dress which you're wearing. Or simply, I like the dress you're wearing. Okay, very good. Thank you, Jose. Correct answer. What about number three? A friend is going to the cinema. You want to know the name of the film. So you say, who wants to try? Vamos, vamos. Hay gente que no le conozco la voz. Nadia, okay, Nadia. I try, it's a difficult. Okay. What the name, what's the name of the film that we're going to see to the cinema? Um, okay, maybe we can change it a little bit. Okay, a friend is going to the cinema, you want to know the name of the film. So you say, what's the name of the film that maybe you seen going to? A bit that, different, uh huh. That, that we we say go to the say no that, mm -hmm. that watch to the cinema. Okay, but okay. So two two things right here. The first one is that it's only your friend. Only your friend is going to the cinema. Your friend is not taking you, <laughs> not this time. So uh, we cannot ah, okay. say when. Okay. So what's the name of the film? Okay. That, huh? that that he the cinema. But you are asking your friend directly. Imagine that I'm your friend and I tell you I'm going to the cinema. So you ask me a question. Okay. Let's see. Saul can help us maybe. Okay, I think the correct form is what is the name of the film you that you are going to see on the cinema. Okay, what's the name of the film that you're going to see? Or simply, what's the name of the film you're going to see? Because you're talking to your friend directly, okay? And apparently your friend is not inviting you <laughs> to the movies with him or her. So um, yeah, he or she is going alone. So what's the name of the film that you're going to see? Or what's the name of the film which you're going to see? Or simply, what's the name of the film you're going to see? Good. What about number four? Oh, thank you, Saul. Okay. Also, um, thank you, uh, Nadia. Number four, you wanted to visit a museum, but it was shot. Okay. This is British. Okay. Let's closed. Now that's American. Okay. So you wanted to visit a museum, but it was closed. So you tell a friend. Uh, I'm going to change this to. Okay. So you tell a friend. It's difficult. Dennis. Yes, teacher. <laughs> okay, Dennis. So my answer is the museum that you wanted to visit was closed. Okay, there's only one little problem because the situation goes like this. You, you wanted to visit a museum. You, Dennis, <laughs> you wanted to visit a museum, but it was closed. So you tell a friend, you tell me. The museum 
the museum that I want that I wanted to vis to visit was closed. The museum that I wanted to visit was closed. Correct. We have a chat entry here. The museum that you wanted to visit was closed. Okay. The problem again. The the problem. Uh, thank you, Erica. By the way, uh, but the only problem is that the person speaking wanted to go to the museum, not the person listening. So. There you go. The museum that I wanted to visit was closed or which I wanted to visit was closed or simply the museum I wanted to visit was closed. Okay, thanks for your participation. Thank you, Dennis, and thank you, Erica. What about number five? 847, wow, it's getting late. So you invented, sorry, it's... I made a mistake okay. here. It's invited. I'm sorry. Okay, this is what okay. happens when you when you're sleepy. You know, preparing a presentation. This happens. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm gonna save the file. So let's see. Just let me let me scan this just to make sure I don't have any more mistakes. Yeah, I think it's okay. Okay, so number five, you invited some people to your party. Some of them couldn't come, so you tell someone who wants to try. Saul. Okay, I think the correct the correct form is some of the people that are invited to the party couldn't come. Okay. Some of the people that I invited to the party, or some of the people who I invited to the party, or simply some of the people I invited to the party couldn't come. Correct. Thank you very much, Saul. What about number six? Your friend had to do some work. You want to know if she has finished. So you say. I Maritza. Um, how you finish the words that that you had to do? Correct. Have you finished the work that you had to do, or have you finished the work which you had to do, or simply have you finished the work you had to do? Correct. Very good. Thank you, Maritza. Number seven. You rented a car. It broke down after a few miles, so you tell a friend. <laughs> I had a mistake. <laughs> okay, so who wants to try? Boris. Okay, Boris. Okay, unfortunately, the car that I rented broke down after an, a few miles. That is correct. Unfortunately, the car that I rented broke down after a few miles. You can also say the car which I rented or simply the car I rented broke down after a few miles. Very good. Okay, great. Great, great, great. Just remember, in these cases, all these cases, the relative pronouns are optional because after them, you don't have a verb. You, okay, so optional. You. Optional. I, okay, they're optional. I again, optional. You, I, they're optional. But if you have a verb, then you have to use them. It's necessary. Let's continue. Now, um, I guess this is going to be the last part today. Relative clauses with or without relative pronouns. Relative pronouns and prepositions, very important. Notice the position of prepositions. Examples of prepositions include to, in, for, from, with, without, by, at, under, etc. So those are prepositions. So notice the position of prepositions in relative clauses. You have an example. Tom is talking to a woman. Do you know her? You have two sentences. The first one is Tom is talking to a woman. Second one, do you know her? But the first sentence, as you can see, has a preposition. You talk to a person, you listen to music, 
you look at something. So those are prepositions right there. Now, if you want to join them both using a relative clause, then you have this. Do you know the woman Tom is talking to? Or you can say, do you know the woman who Tom is talking to? Or do you know the woman that Tom is talking to? I think I'm going to include it just to be clear. Do you know the woman that Tom is talking to, who Tom is talking to? Or do you know the woman Tom is talking to? The preposition goes at the end. Don't forget it. I have an, another example. I'm going to include it too. So I slept in a bed. Slept in. Preposition in. Second sentence. It was uncomfortable. So joining the two sentences together using a relative clause, then you have the bed which I slept in or the bed that I slept in, or simply the bed I slept in wasn't comfortable. So you have to use the preposition after the verb, just like this, talking to, talking to, slept in, slept in. Don't forget the preposition, it's very important. You have two examples. Are these the books that you were looking for? Preposition for goes after the verb. Are these the books which you were looking for? Or simply, are these the books, the books, I'm sorry, you were looking for? Another one, the man who I was sitting next to, you're sitting next to a person, so the man who I was sitting next to on the plane talked all the time. Or the man that I was sitting next to on the plane talked all the time. Or simply, the man I was sitting next to on the plane talked all the time. So you can see here, there's a pattern, okay? The preposition usually goes after the verb. Very important. Now, note that we say the books you were looking for, okay? But you don't say the books you were looking for them. That will be a mistake because them refers to the books. And even though you cannot see it here, okay, there's supposed to be a relative pronoun and the relative pronoun refers to the books. So you don't say for them, okay? After the preposition, you don't need to refer back to whatever it is you're talking about. The man I was sitting next to on the plane, this is good. But if you say the man I was sitting next to him on the plane, that will be incorrect because it's already inside a relative clause. You don't need to use the pronoun. Be careful. So remember, you use the uh, preposition after the verb. That's very important. Now, just to make sure we have understood this, uh, we're going to do an exercise. Now, this is the exercise. Your turn. These sentences all have a relative clause with a preposition. Put the words in the correct order. So did you find, and then in parentheses you have, looking for you the books where so you just have to unscramble the words and put them in the right order so did you find the books you were looking for or did you find the books that are which you were looking for okay what about number two we couldn't go to the in parentheses you have we invited to where the wedding what do you have No relative pronouns this time. I want you to tell me the sentences without relative pronouns. Jose. We couldn't go to the wedding. We were invited to. We couldn't go to the wedding. We were invited to. Correct. We were invited to the wedding. So we couldn't go to the wedding. We were invited to. Mm -hmm. No pudimos ir a la boda a la que nos invitaron. Thank you, Jose. Number three. What's the name of, in parentheses, you have the hotel about me told you. Boris Salinas. What's the name of the hotel you told me about? 
What's the name of the hotel you told me about? Correct, okay, after told, in this case, there's an object also told me about. What's the name of the hotel that you told me about, which you told me about, or simply the hotel you told me about? Very good, thank you, Boris, great. What about number four? You have, unfortunately, I didn't get, and then in parentheses, you have applied, I, the job for. So, Ana Filomena. <laughs> I, I oh, love I, the I love the pictures in the background, by the way. They look pretty cool. Really? You know, the, the, the paintings <laughs> on the wall. <laughs> so, okay, number four. Okay. Um, for, unfortunately, I didn't get the job that I applied for. That I applied for. Okay, good. Unfortunately, I didn't get the job that I applied for, or I didn't get the job I applied for. Okay. That is good. Thank you, Anna. What about number five? Did you enjoy, and then in parentheses you have you, the concert to went. Jenny Elizabeth. Uh, did, did you enjoy the concert you went to? Did you enjoy the concert you went to? Okay. That is correct. Okay, very good. Thank you, Jenny. That's correct. Nice. Number six. Gary is a good person to know. He, and in parentheses, you have on, rely, can, somebody, you. Rely means depend on. Una persona en la que se puede confiar o de la que se puede depender. Okay? Let's rely. Daisy. They see you look like you work in a call center or something. <laughs> okay. okay. Gary, Gary is a good person to know. He's, he's somebody you can own really. Okay, the verb is rely, the preposition is on. So there's a little problem right there. Okay. He's somebody Sorry. you can. It's okay, it's okay. Second try. Let's, let's do it. He's somebody you can. He's somebody you can really on. Rely on, okay? Rely on. Yeah, he's somebody you can rely on. Es alguien en quien puedes, o con quien puedes contar, en quien puedes confiar, o, o de quien puedes depender. So, he's somebody you can rely on, okay? Thank you, Daisy. That's good. And the last one, who were, in parentheses, you have the people with, where you, and then out of the parentheses, in the restaurant yesterday. So, who wants to try? Maritza. And then Selena, I guess, for the next one. <laughs> okay. Who were the people you were with in the restaurant yesterday? That is correct. Who were the people you were with in the restaurant yesterday? Very good. Okay, great. That is just great. All right. Listen, it's nine, but I guess we started at A2, so we still have a couple of minutes. So um, that's very cool. So what are you going to do? I just want you to take a look at this exercise, just pair work, match the information in columns A and B, then rewrite each pair of form to form one sentence. Use a relative pronoun if necessary. We're going to do only part A, and then I'm going to assign part B, let's say, as homework. So what is this? You have, I don't want to have a partner. And this is, by the way, knowledge check 1.4, which I'm going to show to you right now. So over here, right, this one. Okay, um, this is the same that you have in the platform. Now let's check 1.4. So what do you have to do? Okay, instructions, select the best clause that matches the statement. So I don't want to have a partner, and then you select an option. You need to choose one, okay? I'd like to meet people, and then again, you need to choose an option. I'd prefer a roommate, you choose an option. I don't like to be with people and so on, right? I want to discuss my problems with friends. 
I'd rather have a boss. I'd prefer to have teachers. Now, um, sometimes there is more than one possible answer, but because the platform has a very specific answer that you need to use, well, I guess it's going to be a little bit of trial and error. So this is what I want you to do. I want you to do this as homework. Okay, it's the same exercise that I just show you. You have, for example, I don't want to have a partner and it's letter D. I have nothing in common with this person. So it should be this one. I have nothing. Okay. Yeah, so I, I don't have I don't want to have a partner. I have nothing. Oh no, sorry. Is that the one? I have nothing in common with this person. Yeah. So I want you to choose, okay, the correct option. After that. And this is also something that I want you to do as homework. I want you to, I'm going just to show you, I need to eliminate uh, a piece of animation. I'm going to eliminate this piece of animation just, okay. After that, I want you to write sentences using relative clauses. You have, I don't want to have a partner who I have nothing in common with. OK, you are not going to say with this person, because if you say this person, you're repeating it in the uh, relative pronoun. So don't say it again. I don't want to have a partner who I have nothing in common with, or I don't want to have a partner that I have nothing in common with. Or simply, you can say, I don't want to have a partner I have nothing in common with. OK, there it is. Now, <laughs> what happened? Hey, it disappeared. Oh. That's strange. Okay, but that's the idea. I want you to match the two parts of the sentences or the two sentences in this case. And after that, for each pair of sentences, I want you to write a new one using a relative clause. Okay, that's going to be your homework. We're going to check it tomorrow, first thing. Okay, okay. Um, I'm going to uh, call your names one more time. Just a couple of people are missing right now from the list. <laughs> so Alejandro Jose Quintanilla Ayala, are you here? Alejandro Jose Quintanilla Ayala? Alejandro Jose Quintanilla Ayala? No, I'm worried. Okay, um, Katia Graciela Juan de Candray. Katia Graciela Juan de Candray, are you here? Apparently not. Okay. Well, that's the end of the class then. Okay. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for your participation. And uh, I will see you tomorrow, 8 p.m. Take good care. Okay. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Good night, teacher. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Good night, teacher.